Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Sherry and today is slow cooker Sunday. So today we're going to be making a pineapple upside down cake in our slow cooker or crock pot. But before I get started, if this is your first time here, you love food, you love fun, and you love slow cooker recipes, but most importantly, you love helping out a good cause, then make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell and check the description for the details on our chosen charity. All right. So typically I would make my own, I would make my own from scratch pineapple upside down cake, but because it is Sunday, I'm going to do this in the slow cooker. I'm obviously doing that to save on time of, you know, being in the kitchen so we can just kind of cook on its own. I want to make this as easy as possible. So I'm going to use a box cake mix. But before I get to the cake, I want to, for one, line my pan, which I did with a parchment paper circle. And I should have done a video on this, which I haven't done it yet. So I'm going to do that and I will show you how to make one of these on Tuesday since I've already cut this one. But I'm going to go ahead and put in my bowl one cup of packed brown sugar and one quarter cup of melted butter. And you know, I like to use the real stuff. <laughs> so I'm just going to mix this together. And I probably have a little too much here because I'm doing this in a spring pan that's actually going to fit down in my slow cooker. So if you don't have a pan like this, you can do it straight in your slow cooker. I would suggest spraying it with a little bit of Pam first. Um, the only thing is your presentation probably won't be as pretty. Um, I've tried it like that before and to flip the whole slow cooker over because usually they're ceramic, you know, to get that cake to come out clean just usually doesn't happen. So I'm going with a pan that's going to go down in my slow cooker and I'm probably going to put a little bit of water down in there. But because of that, my pan's a little bit smaller than what it would be. So I might have a little bit left over of this and the cake. So I may make some little cupcakes or muffins or something. I'm not sure. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it down in here. And then I'm just gonna kind of press it out with my fingers. Melting butter and mixing it with brown sugar reminds me of the wet sand on a beach. <laughs> reminds me of playing with the sand. Wouldn't that be something if the whole beach was made out of brown sugar and butter? I'd never leave the beach. Well, I don't want to leave the beach anyway, but all right. So I've got all of that pressed out and I'm just going to take this just because I don't want to dirty up any more dishes than I have to. So I'm going to go ahead and mix my cake right in here where I had my brown sugar. I don't think it's going to hurt it a bit. All right. So we're going to take our cake mix. I'm going to set that aside. Take my cake mix and dump it out. And then we're just going to mix in exactly what it says on the back of the box. So a cup of water. Now with a pineapple upside down cake, whenever I take the pineapple and I drain them, I would normally reserve that juice and put that in here. But the reason I decided to make pineapple upside down cake was because I needed to use up the pineapples. I already used the juice for something else. <laughs> I don't know if it was Thirsty Thursday or what. All right, so we're going to put a cup of water in and then a third a cup of oil and then also two eggs. And then I'm just going to whisk this together. I typically don't get out a mixer for cakes. I feel like sometimes they get over mixed. Plus it's just like extra work as far as the cleanup, especially if you're like me and you don't have a dishwasher, you don't want to be cleaning up any <laughs> extra or washing any extra dishes. So here's something I learned the other day. So I've always whisked just like this, just stirring it around a circle and I get very impatient. So I go this way and then I go this way <laughs> as fast as I can. And I was watching of all things with my granddaughter, I was watching Master, Master Chef Junior. And they had all the kids competing to see who could make whipped cream the fastest. So just heavy whipping cream in a bowl and a whisk. And was it that one? No, it wasn't. I was watching that, but it was a different show I saw where they actually did. I think it was America's Test Kitchen. That's probably what it was. And they were saying, what is the best way to whisk? Is it like this? Is it side to side? There was like four or five different ways they were showing. Come to find out it is side to side. That is the correct way to whisk. And apparently it releases like the most force into the whisk whatever you're making. I don't know. <laughs> Made sense when they said it though, right? So we're just going to finish mixing this. All right, now that I've got all this whisked together, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and I'm going to work with my pineapple. So you can leave them in the full circles. I have mine in half circles just because I knew they would fit in this pan better. So I went ahead and half them and I'm just going to lay these. I'm going to make like a little spiral. One last one there. There, that's kind of pretty, isn't it? All right, so then I have my cherries. I cut them in half. And I think I'm going to place them, since we'll flip this, since it's called upside down cake, we're going to flip it. 
I'm going to put the rounded part of the cherry down. So I'm just going to fill in all my little holes here. Then I have one whole one I'm going to stick right in the center. And then I'm also going to fill in these holes here. All right, and one last one right there. Look at that. That's pretty, right? I think it's pretty. <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to pour my cake mix right over the top. We're going to fill this just about two thirds of the way full. And I think that's good. So I have a little bit left over. I'll decide what to do with that later. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my slow cooker. And then we are going to place this right down in here. I'm going to add just a little bit of water. Just so it comes, oh, maybe a half inch or so up the side of the pan. Make sure it's in the center. Replace the lid. I already have it set to high, so I'm going to let it cook about two and a half to three hours. Our upside down cake should be completely cooked. It's completely cooled. I've been letting it sit for about an hour. So I took it out of the slow cooker, emptied the water, and then I just let it cool off. So I'm just going to run my knife around the edge real quick. And I got to tell you, I'm a bit nervous about turning this <laughs> out onto something. So what I also did was grabbed one of these. So I told you I had the leftovers. So I just grabbed some little mini springform pans and threw those in the oven and cooked these. So these cooked in the oven, this cooked in the slow cooker. And then <laughs> just to give me an idea of what's going on in that one, I'm going to take this off of here. These little ones, though, I did not line with parchment paper. So, oh, this one had two things in the bottom of it. <laughs> ah, well, that turned out pretty good. Looks like a little flower, doesn't it? That's cute. Let's hope that one is just as pretty. But it is starting to fall apart already. There's not much cake to be had in these. I just separated what was left into three little springform pans. All right. So if we turn this out and it comes out pretty, I'm not going to taste it. <laughs> I'm going to save it to photograph. But if I mess it up, then I'll taste this one. If this one turns out pretty, we'll, we'll taste that one instead. <gasps> oh, goodness. I slung it on the floor a little bit. Let's see. Are you going to come off of there? Oh, look at that. Oop, we lost a couple of cherries. I have to put those back on there. Oh, I think it's pretty. I think it's really pretty. I'm all sticky now. <laughs> this is my favorite part right here. The brown sugar and the butter. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I don't know if the cake's any good, but the brown sugar and butter certainly is. All right, let's get a bite here. Do we want pineapple, cherry, or all of it? I need a bite of a cherry. Super delicious. <laughs> it is so moist. So I'm betting that one there is like extra moist because that one we baked in the slow cooker with the water bath. So the next time you get out your slow cooker, definitely give the bacon and cakes in there a try because this turned out phenomenal, I think. Hopefully everybody else likes it as much as I do. All right. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next Sunday with another slow cooker recipe. Bye.